episode 155 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 4th of March. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some dressmaking, some cross stitch, some spinning, some confession. A couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread and just some information on my shop update at the end of the podcast. Now I'm really excited that I've been able to finally work out how to do chapters. So along the bottom of the screen there's a time bar and there's now markers for each section so you can skip along to whichever one you want to watch. So I hope you find that useful. So, you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website, crafthousemagic.co.uk so you can find my handmade project bags, hand-dyed yarns, stitch markers, higher higher knitting needles, clover crochet hooks and bag making supplies. So we have the Craft 20 a Day make-along going on in the Ravelry group and on Instagram. You can use the hashtag Craft 20 a Day and it's basically doing something a little bit each day so that um, over the course of like a month or a year you can get quite big projects done. So it doesn't have to last for the whole year if you don't want to but the make-along does go out till the end of the year but um, I will be drawing prizes every quarter so watch out for those. I do have a prize to show you in the confessions section so do stay tuned for that. So let's get into the good stuff shall we? I have some knitting to show you and I have a couple of projects that Liz has been working on. So first of all this is a lovely hat. This is the Graham hat by Jennifer Adams and I picked this yarn out of my stash um, for Liz to knit just because I thought it was lovely and I thought it'd be perfect for this hat. So the yarn is from Gorgeous Alpacas and I picked it up from a Christmas craft fair I think it was two years ago now and this is 50% baby alpaca and 50% merino and it's from a small business um, that is in Cambridge so I picked up a 100 gram ball of this yarn and it did come with a hat pattern but I saw the Graham hat pattern and I just thought that that really fancied the textures that were knitted into this so it's a really simple textured knit which is really effective I haven't blocked this yet um, I think I might block it because blocking makes things drapier normally and I think that an extra bit of drape would look really nice on this hat. So this is how it looks on. And I'm very tempted to put a pom-pom of some sort on there. We shall see. I have actually got a little bit of the yarn left over so I could potentially do one in the same matching colour or I could use one of my pom-poms that I bought over the um the retreat last week or the week before and go blue or maybe pink we shall see <laughs> so the graham hat is a really nice simple pattern actually i i um talked to liz about it when she'd finished and she said that it was a really easy pattern to follow but it just gives a lovely lovely texture so I asked her to do the medium size because I was a bit worried in case there wasn't enough yarn but there was plenty. The medium and the large size is that it just tells you to change your needle size so you could go up to the larger needles. In the pattern it does describe the needle sizes in US terms but it's easy to look on Ravelry in the conversions there so you can easily find it. So I got Liz to use a 3.75 needle for the rib and a 4.5 for the rest of the hat and that coordinates with the medium size um, that's written in the pattern but like I said you could use larger needle sizes to make it slightly bigger. To be honest I've got quite a large head and it fitted me so it was quite good although Liz is quite a loose knitter so it does depend on your gauge as well and also the the thickness of the yarn so even though this is an Aran weight yarn I think Aran weight um, yarns vary quite a bit so it's always best to um, give do a gauge swatch really but I don't I rarely do for hats I just start it and if it looks right it's fine <laughs> so that's the first project I've got to show you I have a second hat that Liz has been working on and this is another gorgeous hat pattern. I don't think you can see the details of the cables as well in this yarn um, because it is quite busy but I still think it goes quite well together. So this is the Pelora's hat by Irina Anakiva, hopefully I've pronounced that correctly. And it's got some gorgeous, gorgeous cables. So there's like a central cable with cables crossing over around the outsides as well. 
and I do think actually it'd probably been better if I'd have chosen a, a plainer yarn for this but it just I think it works out prettily anyway so I got Liz to use a 3.75 millimeter needle for the edge of the hat and a 4.5 for the the top bit which was slightly smaller than the, the actual pattern calls for so you're supposed to use a four millimeter and then a five millimeter for the top um, but I just I gave her the same needle sizes so that she can knit both these hats um, on the same needles thinking it would fit but this one actually has come up a bit smaller because it of course it's cable oh, she'll show you what it looks like on I think it looks quite alright actually with this size. It's just a different sort of style. It's more of a close fitting hat instead of the slouchy one. Um, the other style. So, ta da! Actually, pink. <laughs> I think that would look quite nice actually with a pink because the pink yarn goes quite well with it. Might be tempted to add the little pom pom on. <laughs> So then I could use this one for the, the plainer one. We shall see. <laughs> so that is a really pretty pattern knitted by Liz. And again, I haven't blocked this one. So that's what Liz has been working on this week. So now I'm going to go on to my works in progress. So first of all, I have picked up my Mayfield mitts up again. So this was the one I finished the other week. And it is a gorgeous mitten pattern that has got a really pretty bird on it. I'm hoping that with blocking that where my floats have been caught all along there it will even out a little bit but you can see where I've, ca I've caught the floats. Hopefully that disappears when I block them properly. So the back of the mitten has got this really nice diamond pattern and you've got the same pattern all the way around on the cuff. So they're fingerless mitts, which is brilliant, so you don't have to worry about doing any fingers or anything. So I finished the first mitten a few weeks ago, and I just had a bit of a break from it. So I've picked it up again, and I started on my second mitten. And this is how it looks so far. I think my tension's starting to get better, actually. So I'm using these higher high trio needles, and... I have only done sort of a couple of projects um, on these needles so I'm really starting to really get the feel of them and I think now my tension is getting much better um, with using them for colour work as well so they are they're sort of like DPNs with a flexible bit in the middle and you've, ha you've got two on your work and then you use your third one to work around either side so we're, they're a sort of cross between magic loop and dpn's which i really like for color work because you've got that sort of flexibility of holding a longer needle like a dpn but then because you're sort of working in the round a bit more you can go around the corners i can get those edges a little bit neater when it comes to the edge seams with magic loop um, i always have some tight stitches so these are working out better for me and I'm really enjoying knitting those. It needs a little bit more concentration so I don't pick it up every evening when I'm doing some knitting but that's how I'm getting on with those. So the pattern is by Erica Mount and it's called the Mayfield Mitts pattern and I'm using some really beautiful yarns and these are Phenol Garn Roma yarns that I picked up from Edinburgh Yarn Festival last year and it's quite a subtle sort of colour work combination but I really like the way they're looking. I am using 2.5 millimeter needles because one I do knit colour work quite tightly anyway um, but two I think quite a few people have said that these work up um, quite tightly so when I put this one on it does come out quite tight around the top of my arm here but I think it's not it's not ridiculously tight I think it looks fine um, and I think with a bit of blocking as well that'll be really easy to sort of slip on without having to sort of tug on it a little bit to go up the, the arm um, but that's how those are looking so like I said the pattern calls for a 2.25 millimeter needle but I'm knitting them on 2.5 millimeter needles because I know that I knit the colour work quite tightly but 
as I say, um, a lot of other people have found that they are quite a snug fit. So if you have got, um, if you like the fit to be a little bit looser on the arm, perhaps go up a needle size for this like uh, perhaps up to a 2.75 just for the, the beginning of the cuff because they come up quite a long way up your arm so that's my first work in progress I haven't felt I don't feel as if I've done a big amount on my my v-back tee but here it is <laughs> I think I've done about two inches on it since the last time I showed you so this is a t-shirt that's supposed to be v-neck at the back but I'm going to be wearing this with a v-neck at the front I think because I think that'll be more flattering for me so this first colorway that I'm using is a stranded dye works yarn and it is the equinox colorway and this is the bfl and nylon base 80 percent bfl 20 percent nylon That's how it's looking so I changed the pattern slightly in that I actually did some one by one twisted rib around the neck instead of the standard one by one rib just because I think it looks a little bit neater around the neck that'll probably bring it up a little bit so the neckline won't be as low but I don't mind that too much um, we shall see how much of a difference it makes when I finish so it's got like a this is where the V is going to occur and you've got some um, increases there as you're working down the top from the top down and that for me is going to be at the front even though it's called the v back tee and the v is supposed to be at the back but you can wear it both ways so you can sort of see how it's coming along there and i'm almost at the point where i'm going to be splitting for the sleeves now and i'm about to change to the next colorway so these are the next two colourways that I'm using. This one here is a Hue Loco and this one is a Hedgerow yarn. So I think it'll be really exciting when I start to mix the colours up a bit. So I started with one size, which is a size six, I think. And I'm going to actually, once I've worked a few more rows, is I'm going to do the increases a bit more dramatically so that I'll get up to the next size because I didn't want it to be too big at the top here. Normally with a t-shirt I'll do short rows at the bust to create a bust pocket to make a little bit more room over the bust but because of the design of the t-shirt I won't be doing that um, because it'll spoil the lines of the increases and decreases where the V is supposed to be. So what I think I'm going to be doing is just going up a needle size just by the bust here just to give myself a little bit more room and also because the t-shirt actually the way you knit it it goes down more at the front anyway there'll be a bit of extra room there so we'll see how it goes when i get to the point where there's some short rows to even up the front and the back so i might have to do some changes there as well but there we are there's my v back team i have been working on my cozy memories blanket as well but i've only done about four or five squares so i'm going to leave that until i've done a full row and then i'll give you an update on the blanket so next we have my dressmaking section. So Barbara is going to kindly come through and show you what I've been making this week. Come on, Barbara. Thank you very much, Barbara. Now, Barbara has only got half of my pyjamas on that I've been making, but here is the other half. So I've got this beautiful fabric from Fabrics Galore and it was a present because I got a voucher from my friend Peggy. So thank you, Peggy. Um, I've made it up into some pajamas. <laughs> so the t-shirt is basically the Frankie tee from the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book. So the Frankie tee is supposed to have a higher neck, but I made some modifications to make the neckline lower. And I, in fact, I used the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes neckline um, to match, I matched a, the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes t-shirt over the top of the Frankie once I'd assembled it, marked where the neckline needed to be, then cut the neckline down and then used the neckband from the Agnes t-shirt to make this one. And I I keep doing the same now that I've started. So that is the original Frankie t-shirt pattern and I made the, the neckline a bit lower obviously. And I've done three quarter length sleeves on this one. The original pattern comes in a full length and a three quarter length sleeve for this one. And I pretty much did the rest of the pattern the same, but I did grade between sizes. I I think I graded out a little bit more just by the bust here and to the hips. And then I did a slightly smaller size um, around the shoulders. 
but I've made this pattern so many times now I'm really happy with how it fits. I thought it'd be a great pattern to use as some pyjamas and I have made a pair of pyjamas with this t-shirt pattern before. So it's made out of this gorgeous gorgeous fabric with little fairies on and I used a contrast for the neckband and also for the bottoms as well. So the pattern that I used for the bottoms was also from the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book and these are the Stella joggers. So I'd looked at the Stella um, joggers before but it put me off because I thought oh I'll need to use like a sweatshirt fabric for those and I don't really like the idea of having jogging bottoms that are made of sweatshirt fabric but then I thought well why can't I do it out of a sort of medium weight jersey and it does say in the instructions that you can use a medium weight jersey as long as there is a certain level of stretch to it. I think it said 10% 10 10% 10 crossway stretch I thought yep yeah, absolutely fine I'm going to go with a thinner fabric and see how I get on and So the sizes go up to a size 8 for these jogging bottoms in the book and the waist is supposed to be 38 inches and the hip 37 and the inside leg 28 inches. So I am slightly bigger than that. A lot of Tilly and the Buttons patterns now go up to a larger size but with this stretch book they're up to a size 8. So I had to grade up a little bit at the waist and the hips two centimeters I think so it wasn't too bad I think the most of Tilly's patterns now they've gone up to a much larger size so they're more size inclusive but I don't mind grading up just a little bit on a pattern um, as long as it doesn't change the shape too much for the rest of the leg actually I think once I'd got um, down the leg sort of past the hips to the top of the leg I then just ended up using the largest size in the pattern rather than um, grading that up as well so there we go so the only elastic I could find for the waistband for this pattern was 30 millimeters wide or three centimeters so I actually ended up reducing the size of the waist so it just fitted the three centimeter elastic in there uh, with a little bit of extra room so there's elastic in there but there's also this tie this is more for decoration really I just thought that having a little bit of a contrast bow there really finishes them off nicely I've made the pockets just as it is and it was a lovely easy make you don't even need to do any top stitching for these because they have cuffs on as well which is handy so you can just do it all on an overlocker so you can add the cuffs and add the waistband in the same way and I'm definitely going to make some more again. I am going to take a little bit of footage with me prancing around in the living room just for a few minutes. <laughs> just so that you can see what they look like, look like on. But I'm warning you, they're not to go out of the house in. So they're not the most flattering of things. They're, they're for comfort. <laughs> so there we go. Um, with this t-shirt as well. It just looks like a, a normal Frankie t-shirt at the back. It's a raglan sleeve top. I've used a three needle cover stitch to finish off the cuffs and the bottom of the top as well. And then I've inserted the neckband using an overlocker. And then I've also used my cover stitch to finish the top as well. So there we go, that's those finished. And if pa Barbara would kindly let me try them on, I shall give you a bit of a, a twirl around the living room in my pyjamas. <laughs> So I hope you're not too scarred by that vision. <laughs> so my next section is cross stitch and I've been doing a little bit here every day on this project and this is the Country Cottage Needleworks Winter Welcome and I'm pretty close to finishing. I have quite a lot of snowflakes that I need to add and there's some sparkly thread to add as well. I think since the last time I showed you I've added all the green bits around the edge. There's some sort of lighter green around the edge of a darker green centre 
and I've done all that bit so there's some little snowflakes between the welcome and some snowflakes up here and then there's the sparkly bits to add so I think that I can finish that by next week um, and then I can hang it up and it's literally just in time for spring really <laughs> so at least it's finished for next winter so the linen I'm using is a 28 count linen and that's what the pattern calls for. I'm using most of the called for threads, they're either DMC or some hand dyed ones. So I could only get two of them hand dyed. So the one with the blue I used for the house and one of the greens. I have talked about this before but the blue of the house seems a little bit lighter than it does in the original pattern. But I'm going to do the rest of the pattern and see how it looks and then I might add some definition around the door and the windows I don't know yet or I might just stitch with one thread over the whole thing with um, a very slightly darker blue I shall see though I'm going to finish the rest first and see if I like the look of it but there we go that's my cross stitch so I have been doing some spinning so I was inspired by seeing Becky from the Back to Blighty podcast start her spinning journey and I picked mine up again Woohoo! <laughs> So what I'm trying to do is with a cross stitch to do 20 minutes in the morning just before breakfast and then do 10 minutes of spinning at lunchtime and actually I've been finding that that 10 minutes of spinning at lunchtime it just sort of gets my brain round all the things that I'm going to do in the afternoon so that I have a much calmer and more organised afternoon <laughs> and it's it's good for the brain as well being relaxed for a few minutes. So I've been enjoying doing that. So rather than taking the bobbin off the spinning wheel, I'm going to take the camera downstairs and show you my spinning on my spinning wheel and what fibre I've been spinning. Well, this is what I've been spinning. And it's some fibre that I picked up from John Arban Textiles at the Fibre East show a couple of years ago. And I just thought that was really pretty. I'm not splitting the colours in any particular way, I'm just enjoying spinning it as it is. So before now I've split these pieces into tiny little sections in order to get it to be nice and thin, but I'm trying to train myself just to work from half of the top rather than um, splitting it. I'm just enjoying the spinning rather than worrying about having to pre-draft and things. And I think it's relatively fine, so I'm going to keep on practising that. So I've split the top into two pieces so I can actually spin one onto one bobbin and then the other half onto the other and then I can ply them together. I'm just going to make it a two-ply yarn. So now I have the confessions. I seem to be getting worse. <laughs> I have a few things to show you because, of course... I'd ordered some stuff at the retreat the other week, uh, at the Nordic Knitting Retreat organised by Jenny from Owl About Yarn and also by Zoe from the Pins and Needles podcast. And Jenny dyes some beautiful fibre. And actually, this ties in well with the spinning section. So I bought two gorgeous Shetland braids from Owl About Yarn. So I don't know whether they've got names for the colour. They probably did on the website it doesn't say on the label so there's that one with some gorgeous purples and pinks and blues in and these are Shetland so it's quite a short fibre Shetland so I thought that that would be um, I really enjoy spinning Shetland actually so I thought I'd pick up some of those and this is a more of a purple shade but there's some blues in there as well and this is also a Shetland from Jenny from Owl About Yarn but Jenny has been really kind and she has sent a prize for the podcast so this is a gorgeous 100 grams 100% Polworth fibre and Polworth is a dream to spin it's such a beautiful fibre what I'm going to do is pick the posts that all have either needle felting or spinning in them and this fibre is going to go to one of those winners so actually if you join in the make along with needle felting or spinning you've got a quite a high chance of winning this because at the moment there isn't a lot of spinning and needle felting um, but isn't that beautiful and Jenny is so kind to send a prize to the podcast so thank you ever so much Jenny and look at that it's just beautiful isn't it I do, think sometimes though I buy these braids and I just don't want to use them because they look too nice 
<laughs> so that's that's that. <laughs> Pretty exciting. I've now got lots of fibre. I've probably got enough fibre to keep me going for about six years, I think. <laughs> oh dear. So also at the retreat, I actually won a prize, which was really, really exciting. I won the prize from Beaker Button. So some of the people who were vending at the online show would donate a prize. And then I was the winner of the Beaker Button one. So she's got an advertisement here for the Worldwide Dorset Button Along. And that's on the 8th of January, 2022. And hopefully you'll be able to see the link to her website. I will put a link to the website um, in the description bar down below in the confession section as well and the prize was it was two kits actually which was really exciting so there's one for a dorset and button mix pack and i'm pretty sure she sells either this kit or something similar on the website but to be able to do all these different types of dorset button which is fabulous i have done dorset buttons in the past but not for a while and it comes with the the threads um, and the little hoops you need, the little rings in there as well, which is rather lovely. The threads in this one are an undyed natural colour. Um, it looks like a merino yarn to me. And that came in a cute little bag. That's a really cool way of using, you know, that yarn um, that's like a netting material. I've actually using it as handles because they look really pretty and that's been a little handmade bag and then there's a second bag here with another kit in it as well so this one is for a dorset button angel so there's the instructions in there um, the other booklet had the instructions for that one in as well and there's some really pretty purple yarn for that kit in there and then again um there's a little packet with the needles and the beads and the things you need to make the little angel dorset button so that is brilliant i'm so spoiled so i've got those two kits to have a go at so also at the retreat i ordered some more things so last week i showed you the sort of start the start of the ordering and now I've shown you fibre and I have some more yarn. So I wanted to buy some yarn for some different companies that I'd not tried before and there was this company, the Curated Yarn Company and this is an Etsy shop that I purchased from. I saw that on the Instagram live videos that she'd got some beautiful things so I picked up this mini set. Aren't they gorgeous? And I seem to be getting I seem to be going mad for sort of pinks at the moment and then there's this pale beige here with some pink speckles in it as well the darker one has got some darker pink speckles in which is rather beautiful and I think that sort of golden brown goes really well with pinks and this is called the opulence mini set and it's on 75% merino 25% nylon so I had to pick some of those up I'm thinking Minis don't actually count as stash. <laughs> oh dear. So after all the purchases that I'd made on the online retreat, I then saw that Yorkshire Yarn Fest were doing sort of Instagram live videos for their event last weekend. So I had to support some makers, didn't I? <laughs> so first of all, I ordered these gorgeous minis from Helen from Giddy Yarn, so I shall show you one at a time. So this first mini set, because minis don't count as stash, <laughs> is from the Little Women Mini Bundle. Oh, look at those. Absolutely beautiful. All the different little colours in these. I can't tell you which one's which, but I know that Helen sells these separately as larger skeins as well and they're beautifully dyed so I'm really glad I picked some of those up and then I saw she'd got some of these really zingy colours and I had to have these look at those so these are the new spring mini set and she sells them in 10 gram and 20 gram mini so I thought as I'd already purchased another mini set I ought to get these in 10 grams <laughs> but they are beautiful I am going to be putting these in my cozy memories blanket I think 
so that was those from Helen and this was the spring colourway and um, I think these are all on the merino and nylon base yes 75% merino 25% nylon so those are from Helen and there's Helen's details but I do recommend her podcast as well um, I'll pop a link to her podcast in the description bar down below so also on the Yorkshire Yarn Fest, I saw Ishrat, who's Fruitful Fusion. And look at these. Again, minis do not count in your stash. <laughs> but look, look at those. I think this one's my favorite, absolutely gorgeous. And this is called Red Sec. So I just had to have those. I think she does those in full skeins as well. Um, but I thought, well, minis don't count. Just buy some minis. <laughs> and these are 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon as well. So that's Ishrat's details. So I have the world's most beautiful collection of minis now. I did actually order some more. I'm just waiting for them to come. Oh dear, we shall see what happens next week. I only think, I think there's only one thing I've, I've got left to arrive. So it's not too bad. <laughs> Minis don't count, do they? <laughs> so I have a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread. So first of all, um, Stephanie asked, which patterns would you recommend for beginners in terms of dressmaking? Now, I do think that a lot of the big four sewing patterns, which means like the Simplicity and McCall's and the big companies like that, they quite often expect you to have a base knowledge of techniques of how to sew things. So I would recommend you to go for one of the independent designers really, because they do hold your hand a lot more. They're a lot better at describing all the techniques that you need to use. And I think in particular, I would recommend the Tilly and the Buttons patterns because there are no end of tutorials on the website that take you through step by step. And they also have a YouTube channel for Tilly and the Buttons where they show you some of the techniques as well. So they really hold your hand um, through all the different things you need to know how to do it. There are a number of other patterns companies as well, but I think if, if you basically stick to the ones that are more independent designers they tend to give you a more broken down step-by-step -step instructions for things if you look on their websites and then it normally tells you whether it's good for beginners or sort of intermediate it's quite they normally quite helpful like that so it's quite easy to decide whether the pattern's good for beginners or not so I have another question from the Ask Me Anything thread and that's from Tracy and she was asking what is high twist and what is it useful for? Most people purchase my merino nylon base on my shop which looks like this. If you look really closely at the fibres you can see that there you can see a little bit of the twist of the fibres but you can't see it as much as you would on this one. This is a high twist BFL and you can see that there's extra twist in this yarn and what it does is the high twist gives the yarn extra strength so it is ideal for making socks so the base that I sell in my shop that's high twist is a BFL which is also ideal for for something that needs more durable yarn for the project because it's got a nice long staple length which just means the fibres are longer so that they're less likely to sort of get damaged with wear so a high twist BFL is perfect for knitting socks with. So last of all, I've just got the shop update information. And I just wanted to say that the, the yarn clubs for this month, for March, will be posted out Friday. And the next yarn club, so the April yarn club, will be available for pre-order on the 19th of March. So look out for that. I think I'm going to change the postage dates on my website just to give me a little bit of extra time um, to post those out because sometimes at the end of the month I get really busy and then it just takes me a little bit longer to process so I might be changing those um, dispatch dates by a week or so but it will be all listed in the information page on my website that's, that says yarn clubs. I think that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you next week. Bye!